a sec. There we are. All right, we're both on. All right, you ready, Aim? Here we go. All right, here we go. Okay, so everyone, welcome. Um, sorry, again, technical difficulties with the Wi-Fi in East Hampton, but we're here on Zoom and we are truly, I am so excited about this because we are with one of my favorite people, Amy Weitzman. Interior designer is my friend, uh, her and her husband are clients, and um, she Philly. is, what's that? Philadelphia. Uh, and we, of course, have our Philadelphia connection, of course. I was going to get there. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, uh, but what I was going, but, and truly, you are truly one of my most favorite designers. Uh, and I'll tell you, here's how I know. You know when you walk down the street and you see someone good looking and you think, oh, wow, they're really good looking. And then you're like, and then they walk closer and you know the person, you're like, oh my God, I just saw you and was checking you out. So I'm always checking you out. But here, here's, so, here's how I know you're one of my favorites. On, um, I guess, four years ago, Kirk and I went to a cocktail party. It was a, uh, I, it, Lily was new at, uh, at Heschel. And so it was a cocktail party. Someone was hosting beautiful apartment and they were giving us a tour of the apartment. I kept commenting how much Kirk and I were like, just so taken by how much we love this apartment. It was so our taste. It was so well done. It didn't feel, it felt decorated, but not overly done. And then it came out that we, they're mutual friends of ours and that, um, that you were, indeed their designer so i was checking you out without you knowing it and as i got closer realized oh it's you so that's how i know you're truly one of my favorites thank you so welcome where are you i am in miami beach okay beautiful sunlit day overlooking some turquoise water which oh, is right now only for looking right you can't go on the beach right you go on the beach you could okay. Uh, near the beach, you can um, jog, ride a bike, but uh, the, the beaches are completely blocked off. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. But you're staying healthy and everyone's safe. My eye. What's that? See a little beach, beach on the corner of my eye. All right. Good views. And who, who's there with you? I have my husband, my whole tech support staff. <laughs> that would be your daughter, your son, and your husband. <laughs> and my husband, all who are very savvy uh, with technology, except for mom. Good, well, that's always good to have. I'm just, I'm just good at design. And you're, you're quite good at it, so, all right, good. All right, so I'm so happy that we're here today. Um, let's talk about, well, first of all, how are you doing during all this? Let's just talk about, we're in some strange times, right? Maybe on the end, the other side coming out of it, I hope. Uh, but definitely some surreal times. Yeah, it seems like there's going to be, um, there's a little crack and then some openings, things are going to start to open up a little bit. Yeah. But, um, you know, obviously I escaped New York City and I came down to Florida. I miss New York terribly. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to go back. I'll be, you know, just waiting, at, at kind of watching the days till I can go back and, back to my life and just miss everything about it. What it tell me something, you miss the city? I miss the city, I miss the people, I miss the energy of the street, I miss design and design happening live and not on, you know. Oh, um, interesting, right. Just, like you can, where you can actually yeah, touch and feel. And going to showrooms and touching fabrics and meeting with clients and, and shopping and, just, I miss that whole aspect of my industry. And of course, right. sadness that's, you know, basically overwhelming New York right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's true. You know, I, I've said this a lot over the last few weeks. Of course, we're, we're social beings, but I didn't realize, I read something just last night about a, a nurse who was, I believe it was 15 days, she was coming in from another state and uh, someone was on a ventilator, and uh or in the tube they called it and she held her hand her whole time that she was there and every day and the woman asked her and when she came off of it she asked her to hold her hand 
And I, it just made me think, this is a strange one, two strangers, but that human touch is so important. Yes, everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I mean, this is easy to, I, you know, I, it, you can speak uh, on Zoom to all your friends and your clients, and, but it's just not the same thing. It's no. really thing. I right. find all the social cues are off. I'm not, this is just harder. It's harder to do business as well, for sure. Right. Okay. All right, so I want to get into that. I want to talk about um, I want to talk about your business. I want to talk about some uh, some ideas and things that came up on some of our past live shows. Um, you know, we had Margaret Hoover on and Sarah Haynes, amongst others. But the two of them specifically brought up home yes. and how home feels different, looks different, what they're doing to create. You know, they're both home with children and what they're doing to create a comfortable space, a new space. My God, I've commented, we're, we're out in our, at our beach house, we're in the Hamptons. This is the most time we have ever, the most days consecutively that we have ever spent here. And yeah. we're noticing everything, everything we love, every nook and cranny, every nick on the wall. Give us some tips, tell us what you're doing. I think regardless of decorating, I think that we all are in our homes or something that was representing a home for us right now. So it's uh, obviously changing that definition for the time being. I mean, that's what I do is create homes for people. Mm -hmm. And I think what I am about is not about like overly decorated environments, but comfortable places for people to live, be with their kids, be with their animals, you know, New York city and New Yorkers run around a lot. We're not, it, we're in our homes less than most That's people. Right. That's true. And now I think uh, all the New Yorkers that I work with, or whether they're in their apartment in the city, they're in another home, a home they rented, they got out of the city, uh, we value it. It's like our refuge right now. And I think that will change everyone's perspective probably going forward that what a home is and maybe its importance will change. Maybe people are going to put more into it. And it's not, it doesn't have to be just about money. It's really about maybe just making your home environment a place that you feel, you know, you're psychologically like you're happy in. You're right. happy to be in all your rooms, you're comfortable. So that's really what I've tried to do for people anyway. But I think I'm finding now that clients are calling me and wanting to things that have worn out uh, little one-off things. Can you replace this rug? Can you get me a new chair? I need a more comfortable chair. I wasn't really sitting in it before. And people are living in their homes now. Truly it's living in their homes. Right, right. Rather than just, as you say, New Yorkers, we're always running, just coming, depositing, and, you know, I haven't left my home in, um, whatever, in six, seven weeks. Right, yeah. In my own home, and I'm constantly just, you know, we're watching around. You know, it always looked at, like it was in the right place, but now we're, it's all about, like I have, we have home offices set up in every room, because right. everyone's working, including myself. I, I actually got pushed into our, we have an outdoor patio, so I'm painting and doing my design. That's the only studio that was left for me. That's not so bad, you know, in Miami make everything less about being decorated and more right. just comfort and your ability to work. And, you know, it's not, it's uh, 24 hours a day. So comfort, comfort and practicality. You said something once um, to me, you've said a lot of things that have stuck with me, but with design, I'll get this okay. kind of right, but that you design every room so that um, every room should feel like your family room. It's not like how we grew up in suburban Philadelphia where Never went the, in the, no, no one went in the living room, right? That was the, the special room. Get plastic slip covers. Well, not in our home, please. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about that. And um, I'm looking at your home behind you, which looks so comfortable. Uh, this is the big, great room which I think is also a new phenomenon in design is that this is my kitchen. This is my dining room. This is my living room. This is my family room. It's pretty much where we all gather. We eat, we talk, we play games. 
we uh, watch television. So I think it's about, there's no, no, every room gets used now. I right. rarely do formal dining rooms anymore. I rarely do formal living rooms because people found like, you, particularly in New York, you can't let a room just sit idle. It That's has right. to have a multi functional use. Uh, People. But that's interesting. You bring up dining rooms. Do you think that people are realizing now, you know, eventually we'll get back to where a city certainly of dining out and restaurants, but that more people will be entertaining in? Absolutely. Or enter, e eating with their own family. Yeah. Um, like I said, my dining room table has always functioned as it's also an office. My kids sit on their laptops on the dining room table. I sometimes do a crafts project on the dining room table. Um, I'm, I'm entertaining there, and it also is a part of my living room, so it kind of flows back and forth. I just, you know, I make sure that every room can be used, like the fabrics are functional, the rugs are functional, everything is wipeable, everything is just, you know, you can't have, you can't have anything that you can't use. Well, it can't be so precious. Those, right. 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 Do you use anything? Do you have family heirlooms that you use that were precious? I'm sentimental about things. You're what? You are sentimental. I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm minimalist. So for me to save something, I might. I probably have five items that I'm saving to pass down. You know, as far as heirlooms, I'm just not. I'm really about now just having. A few fewer items, getting rid of all excess, and just keeping, you know, that makes those things even that more important, whether that's, or not I have like yeah. my husband's warm mitzvah kiddish cup. I, I you know, I, I have like five things that I'm uh, I'm holding on to. I less is more for me now. I don't have a lot of, you know, we don't we're lacking storage space. Mm -hmm. uh, I fill up my shelves with my books and things I want to look at. I just don't want a lot of junk. Well, you also, you had, so you had a beautiful home on the Upper West Side that we sold a few years ago and you completely changed and switched and moved downtown to the village where you have a beautiful loft now, very, you were vertical living, townhouse yeah. living, and now you're in one floor, big open space. The vertical living is definitely for a family. It's great because it's a lot of space and everybody yep. gets personal space, but I prefer communal living. I prefer seeing my kids running in and out of the rooms, or we're all to, we see each other more. Right. In the Brown right. City in New York, it's not right. like a suburban home. You are one person's on the first floor and one person's on the fourth floor. And right. you know, it might be a full day where you don't, you don't see them. <laughs> so I'm just, we're getting, last time we got a lot of questions that we didn't get to, but I promise if anyone has questions or thoughts or comments, please join us. Um, so uh, wait, I just want to, people, people will want to know. One, one thing I wanted to tell you was yeah. for people now who are in their homes, it might not be about just go, you know, oh, I'm going to call my decorator and I'm going to make these huge changes. It's like, there's little things that you can do now as you're in your home, like shifting around furniture, maybe getting rid of things. I like to move things around. So I know you do that a lot. Talk about your pillows. Oh, my pillows. Stephen loves my pillows. I keep, I have. Right. And before you do, just so you know, so the, the other day, <laughs> upstairs in our, in our family room, in our den, Kirk, who has a great eye, as you know, um, went and switched out some big uh, throw pillows. Yeah. And, um, and I said, oh, Amy does that all the time. I literally reference you. So tell us about your pillows. It's revolving. Like I take the throw pillows out, put them in the closet, bring out new ones. And then maybe a few weeks later, mm, it doesn't look so good. The other ones come back and I layer in, you know, something else in the room, bring in a different throw blanket. I, I'm, I'm running to Trader Joe's and buying some beautiful orchids. Like well, even just little, bringing in little layers of color are just ways to like change up the room. All right. Change up change up your bookshelves redo them so you're sensitive you're aesthetic you have an artistic eye you paint when you change up a room when you change up bookshelves do you really feel different in the space 
Absolutely. I have, I go over to clients houses all the time and I, you know, I'll say to them, okay, you have me for a half an hour. What do you want me to do? And they're just do my bookshelves. We take everything out and we start putting it back in and you have to look at them as like, even the way I'm looking at your bookshelves, it's just like little moments of art. Mm -hmm. Look at them that way. And the less is more, but I like looking at my books. I, I we have, this is not, you should see the bookshelves we have. I yeah. love books. I have a lot of bookshelves because I'm crazy about, right. I, you know, I do collect little artifacts, a lot of ethnic pieces, things I want to look at all the time. Got it. So tell uh, us about some other small changes. So you want, what did you say, Pill? you collect pillows like women, other women collect earrings? <laughs> yeah, they're my jewelry, exactly. I mean, I wouldn't even want to, it's embarrassing, but I do have a whole, sh the top layer of my closet is all extra throw pillows. I actually could have a sample sale if I everybody <laughs> over at some point and sell a lot of pillows. All right, so I want to get back to points, but before I do, so do, do your kids and David, your husband, do they appreciate it when you're changing all this up and this is great or they find it? Yes and no. I think they are kind of confused by it because they think it's settled one way and then they come back and it's everything <laughs> moved around. Um, there's also the 22 year old who came, comes home to her bedroom and it doesn't look good to her anymore. And we had to get rid of everything that looked too young. Right. Get out her whole bedroom and put in, you know, all white sheets and take everything off the wall and she has to make it her own. So there was a lot of that going on. And my son redid his room too, because now he has laptops stacked up on to his, you know, viewing height on all my oh. art. Got it. All my oh, that's art books coming in. Books are stacked up with a laptop on top. Of Love that. All right. So, what other small tips? So, we say it again. What other? Well, two things. What other small tips? And also, we're all working from home, as you said. You're on the terrace. Your husband's in the bedroom. The kids are where they are. Um, what with organizing an office? I remember in in the townhouse. I loved the office you had off the living room, tons of books. I actually, you can tell David, I still have his book habit that I never returned to him, but. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, you know, books aren't right for everybody. Right. I use them as visual reference anyway for my work, for my painting, for design, because sometimes, they, you know, if you can't keep them neat and you don't really value them as that pieces of art, but they're not right for you. So I, I, you know, maybe just throw some on your, a few on your coffee table, you know, found objects, like you said, even if it is old heirlooms that you have, put them out on your coffee table, look at them as objects of art. I mean, you know, I have an old um, uh, menorah that I put out just because it's, it's kind of ancient looking and I love to look at it and it looks as beautiful as anything else any other accessory I have. Uh, so accessorizing is big for me. I, flowers are big, pillows, throw blankets. And as I said, adding things, taking away things can make a big difference too. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to like put things away in the closet. You might want them again six months from now, get rid of them, hand them down to a friend or your kids, but also eliminating has a huge effect on your home. So Just, Kirk, Kirk's great at that. I have certain pieces that I think are- Hold on to everything? What's it? No, he, I have pieces that I think are so fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I've for 30 years. And he'll say, you know, everything doesn't have to be out. <laughs> I love him. That's his second career. For <laughs> He's Kirk. good. He's really good. Um, so, okay. So tell me, and what about your business now? I get it. People are calling you for little touches, but you were working on projects. We were, we were busy uh, for this hit. So uh, things are, you know, the pause button is on for obviously for construction in New York city. Right. Uh, we're working on budgets. There's a lot of office work that still needs to be done even before, you know, construction is going to resume, mm -hmm. but it can take you weeks to do. So we have that. We have a, a client that just found out she's pregnant. So we're designing, uh, quickly designing a nursery. Oh my God. That's exciting. Virtually. So and this is all virtual. 
all virtual. You can shop online now in our industry for almost everything. Fabrics, furniture, accessories, you name it. I mean, you're going to want to watch out for suppliers because you don't know when factories are reopening. And That's a great point. Right. Going to really be, I try to keep things as local as possible. I really want to support people in, that work around New York City. Uh, maybe they're not in New York City, but they're in Long Island City. They're in Queens, and they're making a lot of lot of things. A lot of my workshops are are they'll be they're small, so hopefully right. they'll, they'll be able to be up and running within a few weeks. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, hopefully they're well. Sounds like that's who's coming out of it first. So um, we will see. But so you're continuing with projects and people. I imagine though, someone who if they're designing their home, they have time now to actually sit and focus on it. That's a very good point. Um, these are really busy people. Yeah. Do not focus on it. And I'm telling you now, everything is about comfort. And it's no longer about, obviously, just those pretty items that you put in a room just to put there and sit there. They want to ma you know, maximize uh, whether it's a sofa, a chair, even the feel of the rug, everything is, is really, everything has to work. Mm -hmm. And they're replacing things. I'm getting, as I said, people are calling me for small items because they're out in their house in the Hamptons or they're um, even, or even in their place in the city, just little, little fix ups. I don't think anybody's gonna jump right into a, a whole new design project uh, now unless it right. had already, you know, been in motion uh, before this happened. Got it. All right, so two people have asked, okay, how we know each other. <laughs> and, <laughs> <love that. laughs> and, and, what's, and what about Philadelphia? We have so, mutual friends, a lot of them. Right. Upper West Side, New York. That's right. Come on, we all know each other. Um, Stephen's daughters in the school that my kids went to. That's right, to, at Heschel. But do you remember who introduced us? Abby Rothschild. Yeah, so, I, so Abby, who I've known since sixth grade, and we grew up in Elkins Abby. Park together. Hi, Abby. Um, she introduced us out here. I think you guys one summer were renting out here, and I was out here, and we met. And then, as I said, we became friends. And we all had the Philadelphia connection and then we worked together and then you've, and you have, and I've referred clients to you. You have some of the most interesting clients. We're not going to go into names, but you really have some great, interesting oh, yeah. people, clients. Yeah. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, I just did recently did a job, a uh, pied -a for one of your clients, which was a yeah. really fun job. I love it. Great. Two of my favorite people. They're amazing. Yeah, they're down. Philly. Philadelphia people, down to earth, Philadelphia people. Oh, don't we? It's so funny. You never get, the Philly never leaves you. Wait. I, you know how I know that? Kirk and Lily tell me, my, <laughs> they ask me to say words. Oh, that's so funny. Say they're water. like, where are you from? <laughs> say water. 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 W-E-D-E-R. W-E-D-E-R. Water. Uh, um, anyway, so, um, all right, so you're, you're busy and you're, you're conducting business and people actually, strain I mean, the linings, they have more time to focus. I, one thing I would say is I once listened to an interior designer interview years ago, um, Muriel Brandolini, and she said that she keeps her, her footprint, her business really small. And it was at a time when I had a large, a large staff. Right, that's your phone. Hello. Sorry, but we're gonna probably have. Probably Hello. Have a <laughs> Hi, you're on my, you're on my, you're in my Zoom. Uh, she said to keep it small. So and I keep I, it. So what does that mean? So that means that like when when dips happen, like 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 are happening right now, I didn't have to fire anyone. I have a small staff. Oh, keep your your business small and tight. Small. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about these. You can bring in, hire more people when things get busy. Use freelance people. Yes. So there's a lot of people out there. And uh, that just, that's been a great okay. thing for me lately. Over the past, I'd say over the past couple of years, I've kept it small. Okay. 
okay. work patrol, and uh, that way, you know, there's been there's dips in the market. You things get slow sometimes. Of course, of course, yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, actually, so tell me what uh, when you say that you're up to date. Uh, tell me okay, not to say anything. Uh, too. I know. Uh, I see. Um, you know, I guess it's troubling, but this is um, a <laughs> hey, you're <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's not be anything private in the middle of the I day. I love that. Even it, that would have been better. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do for the next Zoom. I'll just I'll set up someone calling in, <laughs> saying something really provocative. With for. for all all Philly, Philly people. Yes. Say it again. We have a panel of just Philadelphians who've made oh. it in New York. I guess we are having technical uh, diff difficulties. That's right. if it, we're okay if it just doesn't ring. All right. So I want to ask you about what do you, how often do you go back to Philadelphia? It's that, that I do not. I really don't. There's no one's there anymore. Everyone's moved. Uh, right. The other places my family lives all over the country so i don't i really don't go back i've always wanted to have a design job there though just to yeah. like it would be fun well, i you know i fantasize about i have this romantic notion we i go back a lot my mother's there we have lots of friends there and mm -hmm. you know when you go to the philadelphia suburbs which you know i've lived in south africa and australia and israel but Philadelphia, I truly think, have some of the most beautiful suburbs. You know, they're very old, the older suburbs, uh, Montgomery County and Wayne. Um, and so to have one of those big old manor homes. I know. And also just because I think that that's something I'm sentimental about. I've done beautiful homes in Scarsdale and Chappaqua. Oh, yeah, so I was just on the phone with Dr. Carmona. Uh, it's David Adler. He kept trying to call me back, but I'm, it's a long story, but if he's able to pick up, he's trying to reach me. Talking to the vet. Sure. Okay, hold on, hold on. No worries. You're on our lives. You're on our lives. I know, can't you just come to the gentleman? Hang in, everyone. She'll be back. Here she is. Sorry about that. That's all right. What I love about this time, everyone can be vulnerable and authentic. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? <laughs> um, how's your cat? My cat is sick. So we are back and forth with the doctors. It's, I'm sorry. People who know me know this cat is really like a part of my identity. So it's been hard. Actually. I'm sorry. All right. Well, Hopefully everything will be okay. So you're in touch with, you have a vet there, obviously. Yes. Yeah, good. Yes, okay. And also during the COVID, you don't, you, you stay in your car and they take the animal from you. You don't even go into the vet's office. Oh, wow. They've they got it set up. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's actually hard. Yeah. Oh, because you're not with, you can't actually go in, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so. We're getting questions. Feel free to send questions, comments. People want to talk about Philadelphia. That's really What cute. is that? That is so cute. I love that. <laughs> Listen, Philadelphia is a good place. There's it's a lot of creativity that comes out of Philadelphia. It was fertile ground for, for But we ended up in New York, though, which is, you know. But we're wow. close enough to Philly that I feel like that's why I said I would love to do a job there. Yeah. Have. I've done even, I did a job on the Jersey Shore. That was the closest I've gotten. Where, which? In Avalon, New Jersey. In Avalon, which is, so when we were growing up, Avalon was not what Avalon oh, is today. We didn't, to Avalon. we didn't go to Avalon. Did you? No, I went one, but now it's like. Gorgeous. Yeah. All this, Brigantine became like Brigantine Castle. That's the only reason I went to Brigantine, to go to that haunted house. Wow. Now, Brigantine's beautiful. We have a house in Brigantine. Oh, you do? Yes! It wasn't even a setup. You do? Well, it's my, it's, it was my, my father's house. So oh, you. that's right. That's when you ran into Lauren Young at Dino's. And somehow you put together that we knew each other. Yes. No, that, I ran into her at Margate, New Jersey, at the coffee yeah, shop. At, 
Oh, at the coffee? Oh, I thought it was Dina's. Okay. The All very right. chic Margate, New Jersey. Yes. We still go. Better than the Hamptons, Stephen. Uh, you know, that was always the toss-up. Where, where would we go? But I guess we're more New York-centric now. More Hamptons. Yeah. More business. What's that? I said, where could you do more business? Um, you know what? I actually have a lot of Philadelphia clients. Oh, you do? Yeah, just because over the years and contacts, yeah. Um, Wait, are you my, buying places in New York? Or yeah, buying, and, and not um, that are coming from New York or pied a -terres. Um So yeah, I actually deal with a lot of Philadelphians, but yeah, it's New York City, so we're more clients and more business out here. Um, all right, hold on, we have some questions. Uh, oh, that's interesting. This is for Amy. Um, how do you keep your furniture looking fresh when everyone is sitting on it way, way more than normal? <laughs> you know what, from the beginning, I try not to get furniture pieces that look rumpled. You know what I mean? Like I try to have my, I don't like sofas that are always look tired, like right. I try to get by more crisp pieces. Pieces mm -hmm. also like, I'm sitting on all wood furniture now that you can literally wipe with a wet cloth. Right. So I try to get things, I'm not thinking about what everything's going to look like on the day of arrival. I'm thinking about what is it going to look like a year down the line or two years down the line. That's so smart. So that comes back to the practical of it all. Livable, livable and practical. So the stuff is comfortable, but it's highly constructed. So it's not going to wrinkle or the phone, you know, you can't have too much down feathers. You want to have a foam, a foam um, structure to it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's easy to make things look good in the beginning, but if I go back to visit a client, which I'm with them sometimes for years, I want to, I want to be proud of it two years later. Sometimes it's eight years later. How much is all of your business referral? 100% referral. And you've been doing this over 20 years, right? My daughter, I go by my daughter's life. She's 22. Cause that's when I switched careers. Right. Uh, I'm going to say 22 years. So that's interesting. I didn't mention early on. So you were originally, you worked at Joseph Abood and Ralph Lauren mm -hmm. and you were designing textile. I was designing their home, Ralph Lauren, their home collection. The wow. When it first got started. First got started. That's a long time ago. Wow. Yes. That's great. Owls, sheets, wallpaper. Uh, and then I worked more, in, I worked in textiles, but in focused it, it more in the menswear industry. Mm -hmm. And I I'm a, I mean, I'd say my claim to fame was designing men's ties. I, tr I loved it. But ties. Ralph Lauren? Uh, for Joseph Abood, Claiborne, for, oh, for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I did the men's ties. Was, oh, I love that. Oh, such that a. That is great. That's so interesting. I never knew that. Yeah. We, I worked with the curators and we worked with. Uh, you know, historical documents and made beautiful textiles out of them for men's ties. And, and would sell them. These were for in the, Probably in the museum, but we sold them at in department stores and it was a huge. Hit. Interesting. So a, a few years ago, I realized my, my favorite um, stores now are museum stores, the oh. museum gift shops, yeah. because they, they tend to have one offs. They tend to be ahead of their time. And, you know, we, one of my favorite, uh, home, you know, I love homes and going back to the history of where we're from, some of these great estates that we grew up around. But the, uh, the another Philadelphia family, the Annenbergs had their great estate, uh, Sunnylands in uh, Rancho Mirage. And we brought beautiful candlesticks and, and coffee mugs from there. And now this is going back years ago. Now you see them all the time. Oh, but they, they tend to have smaller items, fewer of them, because they're artists and upcoming designers who want to get their stuff out there. Yeah, you know, a really good one is that design museum on Columbus Circle. Oh, yeah. They have a great shop. Yeah, um, it's terrific. Robert, really, yeah. Really, really unique pieces there. Obviously, MoMA shop. I was down in the, actually in the museum shop down here at the Perez Museum. Incredibly merchandised. Uh, design store. Yeah, that's that's my, my new thing. For, them, for, for museums. All right. 
All right, let me see a few more questions. Um, okay, someone's commenting on, I called it a bracelet, but clearly they know better. They're calling it a cuff. <laughs> Is that what that's called? Not to wear this. She doesn't like it. Wait, I love it. Show it. Well, they're commenting, so you better show it. I love it. It's leather and metal. So it's like leather, but it's been lined. The coolest part about it is it's backed in metal. Wow. Okay. Very small designer in, uh, called Artemis Quibble. He uh, used to have a site. Uh, uh, it was a store in a really rarefied store in San Francisco on Sacramento Street that I bought this beautiful store. It's no longer in business. Okay. Well, commenting, and you know who that's from? Elise Miller. Oh, I love Elise. <laughs> so Elise, but she said she loves all your stuff. So oh, I love, love her. There's, that's another common friend. Exactly. Not Philadelphia, but a common friend. Um, yes. <laughs> she came out of nowhere. Um, all right. So I think, uh, so let me, one last question. Top three changes you should make now to make your home more quarantine worthy. Oh. Top three. Okay. Um, like I said, you can't really buy new merchandise now. And, right. You know, like I said, you could go to Trader Joe's and buy potted flowers, buy some succulents. It's great to look at life in your apartment right now. Mm -hmm. So I do recommend even these, these potted flowers you can get at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. Um, I, I love having that. Uh, as far as changes go, like I said, you know, take things out of closets, take things out of shelves and redo them. You're never gonna have the time again to do that. This is your time. Try to reorganize. Um, and as far as, like I said, switch things around. I have, uh, I collect, here's a perfect example. It'll show you. This is a company called Block Shop Textiles. Oh, that's pretty. Go to their website. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Like I just bought, uh, got a whole bunch of pillows from them. I know people are going to ask, what's it called? Block Shop Textiles. Fantastic. Block Shop. They're out of California. Okay. I collect, this is, um, I don't know where I found this. This is a scrap of indigo fabric. And I'm going to make, it's just a scrap of fabric. And I'm going to make more pillows. <laughs> because I need them. Uh, you can sew these by hand. You don't even need a, a sewing machine. Do you um, do that? Stuff you and do that. I do do, I, oh, I sew. Wow. I will sew um, and you can make, you know, uh, throw these on furniture, make pillows out of them. I just, um, uh, I'm thinking about more things that you could do, you can do right now. That's terrific. Um, so this I, is a bad, this is a bad example behind us because this is a guest room with, with a printer and this is our makeshift office. But Kirk, back to Kirk, he was in, he was the other day rearranged all our shelves, similar to what you're saying. And he said, God, you're Stephen, cause I keep buying books. He said, it's too cluttered, like enough. So he spread out the stuff. Now that is the, I'm telling you, you'll never have the time again to do that. That's right, when do you have the time? Take advantage of the time, sorry. Um, not sure how to even do that all. There you go. You know me back? You there? You yeah, know one, what? one last thing yeah. I want to say. Wait, one more last thing. Go, oh, yeah, please. If somebody is so inspired, think about um, like I do, I'll paint one wall a color in a room. Call it a feature wall, the rest of the walls could be white or they're neutral like your walls in the back. Right. You know, if you're really inspired, you could do something like that. I'm sure there's paint you can order. That's um, a great idea. And God, will that change a uh, to whole do world. anything you can do that with a with a roller. Right. Pick a color, you can always repaint it at another point. It's a, it's a good project for a day or two. That is a great idea. All right. Amy, this was so much fun. Thank you for all the tips. And um, I hope everyone stays healthy and happy. Good luck with your, the cat. Um, everyone, I hope everyone's enjoying these live uh, sessions that we're doing. Stay tuned this Friday, May 1st, 2 p.m. Tim will be speaking live to Tiki Barber. 
and we look forward to seeing you then. Hit us up if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, and thanks for tuning in. Amy, thank Bye, you everybody. so much. Bye. Bye.